Right, okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at the uh, Cleveland HB Turbo Launcher Irons. I don't know whether that's the right way to, uh, what the correct name is, but that's what we'll go with. But we're looking at them in a slightly different way than I would normally review a product. Yes, we will, or I will review it out on the golf course, and I'll give you my opinion on how I think they play, feel, all the rest of them things. But we're gonna try and measure some of the claims that, um, Cleveland make as to how this club may help average golfers and the only way we can do that is with data so these irons are a hollow body construction they're very much unique in their shape they're almost uh, like hybrid like like mini hybrids and the obvious reason they've been designed like that is because we can get that CG placed low back and it allows us to help and assist or the club to help and assist with launch angle. So that's one thing that we're gonna measure very, very shortly. There's some internal strengthening bars which are in there, not only to produce um, in terms of strength of the club face itself, but there's also some sound dampening bars there which is supposed to help with sound and feel on previous models. I can't comment on how that compares because I've not tried these things before in terms of previous models, but we will take a close look at them out on the course and how they perform. I've got to say, I mean, Again, when you sit these up at top line, I've got six and eight iron, I've stood and had a look at both of them. Eight iron, you don't see the back end, which is very much this bulbous crown. It's gonna be off-putting for a lot of golfers, and for others, it's not a problem. But like I said, in eight iron, you just see that top line, whereas in the six iron that I've got, you start to see that rounded back end, and it starts to become very, very noticeable. Big, wide, thick sole. All them things, I would think, are gonna help an average golfer in doing what we struggle to do which is a lot of the time is get that ball airborne get some nice launch conditions firing in at greens is it going to impact on spin the other thing that they're claiming is that they're going to see ball speeds across that club face so no dip offs for off center hit so we'll certainly put that to the test so we're going to start there we're going to go to four golf chester we'll collect some data and we'll answer the first part of this these questions and then, of course, I will take it out on a golf course and I'll give you my overall opinion on how I think it performed out in reality. What a great shot that is. That's right at the flag. And it's carried there as well. We started in this position for a reason. I'm back at the 150 marker on the first hole at Conway Golf Club. And I did the test at a Wilson equivalent just a few weeks back and I started from this exact same position. So, out on the course, we've got dry ball data. You've seen the tech spec. Let's find out how this performs in the hands of an average golfer out here in reality. It was almost like shot for shot action replay of the Wilson review because this is pretty much where I landed uh, but a little closer to the flag than I did on that day but again just tugged it down the left hand side. I've only got the six and eight iron as you can see from the numbers we've produced and uh, we will try a few little sort of chip shots around the green but I'd like to have had a wedge and seen how they sort of sort of how much slimmer in terms of profile they become at that end of the game because this is the important bit for me. I think they're very much in the longer end of the bag. You can accept them in terms of the bulk of mass on the eye. Like I said, it's just like uh, like hybrids, effectively. But down this end of the uh, bag, it's a little bit different. Yeah, not a bad effort with an eight iron in hand. A little bit fat on that, a little bit heavy, and it's going to come up short. But once again, again, the... the it's sometimes more interesting for me if the weakness of the strike, the poorness, the quality of the shot is often what sort of uh, is really how this club should be judged. And what's interesting again is just how these clubs perform when you don't get that perfect strike on it. And I think that's what's going to happen for more than most in terms of average golfers. So 
And the other interesting thing for me, just in three shots in, obviously I've tried these at the range, but it's a different environment once you get outside. It's just the feel is quite impressive, you know. And without doing a comparison, a lot different than that of the Wilson clubs that I tested. Right, okay, so the main purpose of the video really for me is to test whether or not this style of club is more suited to average golfers and is it going to help you out in terms of, like I said, ball speeds that we're looking to test, but also maybe help with launch angle, just getting that ball up and airborne for slower swing speeds. And we'll establish that by the end of this video. But a question I've got for you is more about two things. Would you game, the big deal is, would you game this style of iron? Because it's a lot different than what you're used to visually, but are you prepared to put that to one side to put these on the in the bag if they were outstanding in terms of performance differences? And that's a big question. And then it's a Cleveland product. It's Cleveland irons or a Cleveland hybrid set of irons. And the same question. Would you put them in the bag? Because I think that's the problem that both Cleveland and Wilson have got with this style of iron. It's not just about performance. It's about whether or not people are prepared to stick them in the bag and make that change. Right, so I think the next thing we need to talk about is uh, I've got a slightly longer iron, six iron. I think for me, with this, we could just go have a look at this top line. I think they've done it quite nice. There's a clear differential between the club face and, um, and the top line colour and the back end. It's black and chrome. And they're very much separated. And it almost like it's at this position that I'm in now, looking down at because of the dark colour against the dark grass, it almost just frames the iron. You do concentrate just on that iron element, the front part of the club. So I really like the way they've done that. And it sort of slopes off at the back end. And in all honesty, for when I first seen these clubs in terms of images, again, you question, could I really play them? But at a dress, it looks well. I've got no issues with that whatsoever. Like I said, it is what it is. It's a game improvement iron. So that top line is incredibly thick. But it's what you'd expect from this club. And the back end, so to speak, doesn't detract from that at all. Let's see if we can get a decent uh, iron. I think we might just be a little bit too far out where I've set this up. But uh, just to see how this thing... First six iron, out on the course. Oh, wow. Now, there's that launch. Now, that for me, for a six iron, is it going to get there or front bunker? No, it did get there. It managed to get uh, just top right, leaked out a little bit to that right-hand side, and I'll sh throw Shot Tracer on just to get that ball um, flight. Because that's the thing for me. That was six iron in hand, and the ball flight that these achieve in terms of launch, fairly steady swing, what that did was exactly what it's supposed to do. Get that ball up and airborne with relative ease, relatively slow swing speed, ball fired out there, and it was launching plenty high enough. I'm not sure I'd want that launch in the wind out here at Conway, but for today, absolutely perfect. Right, just switch the camera back on for a second, because I've come over the brow, and uh, not only did it clear, there it is, just on the bank over there, that's where the ball came to, almost pin-eye with a flag. And believe me, that's an impressive carry from there, because like I said, I was worried if it carried this bunker, which is just behind me, and it's absolutely flown in terms of carry. That's impressive, you know. Right, I'm going to end this video here and uh, I'm going to get one more eight iron into this green before I do finish and that'll come up at the very end, but let's hope I don't mess that up. I just want to summarise uh, from my experience of hitting. I've played nine holes with these clubs, just a six and an eight iron. Like I said, would have liked to have seen down the wedge end what it looks like, but it's an overall review of positivity. I'm afraid that people who like some negatives thrown in I'll do my best, but I think for average golfers and for, a, for if you require certain things and struggle with launch, struggle with swing speed, these are no-brainer in terms of having a go of. In terms of that wide sole, again, I think it's going to be a massive help to you in a number of situations. You perhaps haven't tried these out the rough, which you should have done. And the looks elements, I don't mind. Like I said, the separation, the clear separation between that iron profile and the back end is okay on the eye for me. I can manage that. But the one thing that I didn't expect that is quite different from other types that I've tried is the sound and the feel. Again, from this kind of construction and hybrid-like, it's not hybrid-like in its sound, and I really do like the way this thing feels as well. So it ticks so many boxes, it's hugely positive, and like I said, I could only urge you 
to go and have a go. Don't dismiss them based on the looks is all I can say. Now we're going to not ruin that. I know we're not. Look at the launch. Again, it's at that left bunker. Has it carried it? It wouldn't have been far off, you know. We're playing about 160 out, 8 iron. Nice, easy swing. It ends there. Very, very positive. Go and give them a go.